So now we're getting ready for, for the papal nuncios here. And uh, we're getting ready to start Mass. It brings us back on schedule because to our friends in Poland, America, Bunkrana, of course, to Brian Flanagan and his, his, uh, his group in Bunkrana, and to all the other groups that are watching us on the internet through the live stream that, uh, in fairness to you, that you've, you were on a schedule. So we, we brought it back on schedule, and because Father Kevin included the chaplet in his holy hour, which is the first time, so that means that we're, we've...
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. It gives me tremendous joy in my heart to be with you here this afternoon at the RDS for this final Mass, this concluding Mass of the 25th Annual Divine Mercy Conference. And I've heard from the organizers and from the participants that these last 48 hours have been a time of great grace, of great spiritual enrichment, of great confirmation in our Catholic faith, in the beauty of our Catholic faith. The Catholic Church in Ireland has a beautiful future ahead of it. And that future is represented by all of you gathered here under this beautiful image of divine mercy to ask the Lord, asking his Holy Mother Mary to come into our lives, to inspire us to carry the gospel to the world which so desperately needs it. And since we celebrate divine mercy, we begin the Mass as we always begin, by turning to our Heavenly Father, recognizing our sins, and really, from the depths of our heart, begging for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie. have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. The Lord took Abraham outside and said, Look towards heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans 
to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a she-goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in two, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and lo, a dread and great darkness fell upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, to your descendants, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Euphrates. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. Brethren, join in imitating me and mark those who so live as you have an example in us. For many of whom I have told, for many of whom I have told, I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and they, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a savior the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power which enables him, enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. And he, and as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered and his remnant became dazzling white. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure which was to be accomplished in Jerusalem. 
Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but kept awake. And they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three boots, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. And as he said this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is good that we are here. These are the words we heard in the gospel today, and they most beautifully reflect the experience that all of you have had over this weekend here in Dublin. It's truly good that we are here. Good to gather, good to pray, good to share the experience of our Catholic faith with our brothers and sisters. Because when we come together, our faith is strengthened, isn't it? When we come together, we see the witness provided by our brothers and sisters in the faith. And that witness inspires us to be better Catholics, fills us with courage and hope and joy. And that's why this 25th annual convention, this conference of divine mercy is so important for the life of the church in Ireland. So important, especially in our own times, when so many voices in the world tell us that God doesn't exist, that the world is only a material reality, that our goal in life should just be to satisfy our desires, to enjoy ourselves, to go on vacation, to have a little bit of fun, because that's all there is. Nothing comes after. Our lives are completely earthbound. Divine mercy tells us something completely different. It tells us no, God exists. God is real. God has created us. And in God, we find our joy and our hope. And that is why it's so good to be here, so good to be together. Pope John Paul II, now saint, in his letter on divine mercy, Dives in Misericordia, rich in mercy in Latin, written just after he returned to Rome from being here in Ireland in 1979, warned us about the dangers of living in a society, as he put it, ruled by consumerism and pleasure. And that is really what has come to pass in many parts of the world, not excluding Ireland. A, a world of consumerism, a world in which especially young people are not given the opportunity to open their hearts to God, but are told that they can fulfill the desires of their heart simply by seeking material things, by buying stuff, by getting the latest gadget and the most extravagant fashion. But we know when we look around that that does not satisfy the human heart. That does not satisfy the deepest desires of our human nature. We're made for something more. We're made by God, and we're made for God. And when we deny that, when we ignore that element, while we think we're going to find some kind of joy 
as we see in the world around us, nothing but misery increases. A misery that might be accompanied by material abundance, but a misery nonetheless. We are made for God because we are made by God. Think of it, all of us here this afternoon, none of us created ourselves. No one asked your permission before you were brought into the world. You opened up your eyes one day here in Ireland or wherever you're from, and you realize, here I am, I exist. All of us have the experience of not having made ourselves. We came into the world not by any choice that we made, but by a choice that God made to create you in his image and likeness and to give you a destiny that's in heaven. And that destiny cannot be forfeited or substituted for some simply material longing or simply some consumeristic satisfaction, it doesn't satisfy us. And that is what divine mercy tells us and repeats to us. You know, brothers and sisters, it was precisely on almost exactly this day, 85 years ago, on the night of Sunday, the 22nd of February, 1931, in the middle of Poland, a young sister, a simple nun, a beautiful consecrated religious had an experience of the Lord, an experience of Jesus on that night in central Poland. Her name, as all of you know, was Sister Faustina. And the Lord came to her, appeared to her as the king of mercy, the king of divine mercy, wearing this white garment and with rays, red and white, emanating from his heart. And she wrote in her diary that the Lord appeared to her and asked her to recreate this image and write underneath it in the words in Polish, translated into English for us, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. That is the miracle, the apparition that came to Sister Faustina. And think about it, a poor, unknown sister, 25 years old, in the middle of Poland, the experience of the Lord, the encounter with Jesus, changed the history of the church in the 20th century. What she received has gone from one corner of the world to another. Before I came to Ireland, as your papal nuncio, I worked in the Vatican, and I had the opportunity to travel all over the world. And in every corner of the world, I would see this image, and I would see people praying the chaplet of divine mercy. That image, that devotion spread throughout the entire world. It shows us many things, doesn't it? It shows us how precious is the vocation of consecrated women in the church. Sometimes we think it's the popes and the bishops who are leading. But in this case, the popes and the bishops were following Sister Faustina. Pope John Paul II took her beautiful devo devotion and helped popularize it, but it came from her. It came from this soul who loved Jesus intimately, this consecrated soul, this consecrated religious woman. How we need consecrated religious women like that today in Ireland, and how I pray that many young women will respond to the call of Jesus to consecrate themselves in religious life. The encounter with Christ in prayer, in the silence of a heart, changes the world. And you know, that's what the gospel is about today. The Gospel of the Transfiguration, which we read twice a year, the second Sunday of Lent, where we are right now, but also in the middle of the summer for the Feast of the Transfiguration. This Gospel is so important, it's read twice a year. What happens? Peter, James, and John called to that encounter with Jesus. Something changes. Jesus appears radiant, appears in glory, and they see his glory, and they hear the voice of the Father. But you know, the great theologians of the church, the great fathers of the church, the great thinkers and saints of the church say really what happens in the transfiguration is not so much a change in Jesus. He is always glorious. He is always God made man. But his divinity becomes apparent to the eyes of Peter, James, and John. So the real change is in them. The real transformation is in them. They are changed they begin to see the reality of Jesus. In our opening prayer for this Mass, we pray for the gift of spiritual vision, the gift of spiritual sight 
purified spiritual sight so that we can see the way the apostles saw, so that we can see Jesus. And when we see him the way Sister Faustina saw him, the way the apostles see him in the gospel today, we are changed and we become missionaries. That's the essential dynamic, the essential structure of Christian life, the experience of Christ and then the missionary impulse. The look of the Lord, the gaze of the Lord, the sight of the Lord, and then to go off and to give that message. Even Sister Faustina did that. Even as a cloistered religious, her message went out through the entire world. The same is true for the apostles. The same is true for Pope Francis, who never ceases to repeat that dynamic of vision, of sight, of the gaze of Jesus, encountering Jesus, and then going off on mission bringing that love, that mercy to the world around us. That's what Jesus wants. He wants you to say, I trust in you, Jesus. But that trust is not simply a private thing. It's a trust that will make you, wherever you are, an apostle. In a small way, in a big way, in God's way, in the way that he will choose for your life. Pope Francis repeats this again and again. Let me read to you something he said last September when he was in Cuba, on one of his pilgrimages, he was speaking about that call of St. Matthew, which is so close to the heart of Pope Francis, because Pope Francis even uses that call as the basis of his motto, his papal motto, miserando atque eligendo, having mercy and choosing. He talks about how Jesus saw Matthew and then called him, and how that changes everything in Matthew's heart, that look of mercy. Here's what Pope Francis said, Jesus looks at Matthew calmly, peacefully. He looks at him with the eyes of mercy. He looks at Matthew as no one had ever looked at him before. And that look of Jesus unlocked Matthew's heart. It set him free. It healed him. It gave him hope, a new life, as it did to Zacchaeus, to Bartimaeus, to Mary Magdalene, to Peter, and to each one of us. Even if we dare not raise our eyes to the Lord, he, the Lord, always looks at us first, Pope Francis said. This is our story, and it's like that of so many others. Each one of us can say, I too am a sinner whom Jesus has looked upon. After the look, Pope Francis says, after the Lord looked on him with mercy, he said to Matthew, follow me. Matthew got up and followed him. After the look, a word. After love, mission. Matthew is no longer the same. He's changed inside. He has, what we heard in the opening prayer, that purified spiritual vision, that gaze, that eye-to-eye -eye vision with the Lord. Then the Pope goes on to say, the encounter with Jesus and his loving mercy transformed Matthew. His table, his money, his exclusion were all left behind. Before, he sat waiting to collect his taxes, to take from others. Now, with Jesus, he must get up and give. Give himself to others. Jesus looks at him, and Matthew encounters what Pope Francis calls the joy of service. For Matthew and for all who have felt the gaze of Jesus, and let me say in parentheses, I'm sure you have felt that gaze during this weekend. For all who have felt the gaze of Jesus, other people are no longer people to be used and abused, lived off of, taken advantage of. No, the gaze of Jesus gives rise to missionary activity, service, and pushes us to go beyond ourselves, not to be satisfied with what is politically correct, Pope Francis says. And that's why he established this year of mercy. First of all, that we can receive mercy, the look of Christ, which we receive in the sacraments principally, in the Holy Eucharist, in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, in the sacrament of confession, but then to go off and to give mercy, to show mercy, to carry mercy, to live the spiritual and the corporal works of mercy. That's our responsibility in the Ireland of today. How many people 
are wandering around, stumbling around, looking for some source of light and love. We've received that light and love. And we need to give that light and love to those around us. We need to be transmitters of God's mercy. We need to be communicators of that heartfelt and tender mercy of Christ, which changes hearts. As all of us know, it's not priests and bishops banging on the pulpit that will change people's hearts. It's love and mercy that changes everything, that changed three apostles in today's gospel into men who then went out throughout the entire world to spread the message of Christ. That message that came into the heart of Faustina and made her, in her own way, a missionary of Christ. And finally, brothers and sisters, we need also to realize that the communication of mercy, the transference of mercy, that mercy that all of us have received, which we have received from Jesus, and which is expressed in the church when she calls us to practice the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, that also means that we, as Catholic Christians, cannot fail even to act politically on the basis of our beliefs. Yeah, of course, it's true, as St. Paul says in the first reading today, the letter to the Philippians, our homeland is in heaven. It's true. It's also true that Jesus says to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. That's true. But the structuring of this world, the betterment of this world, our present world, according to the principles of mercy, that's vitally important. Our faith, brothers and sisters, is not simply a private matter. It's not simply a personal matter between us and the Lord, as it wasn't for the apostles, as it wasn't for Sister Faustina. It has to have ramifications for how we act and how we contribute to society, as Pope Francis is always reminding us. So can I remind you, the issues which the bishops of Ireland mentioned last week in their pastoral statement, which relate to things like health, the home, education, security, human ecology, and international responsibility. These are issues which call us to put our faith into practice, even in the realm of politics. And let's not forget that as we do that, the basic foundational right which must be ensured by any society is the right to life itself. All human beings, every single one, whatever their condition, whether they're babies in the wombs of their mothers or elderly and sick people, all deserve the same protection under the law which the rest of us receive. So let's remember those things. Let's remember that that is a way of showing mercy, of spreading mercy. We're not called to be private Catholics. We wouldn't be here at the RDS sharing our faith publicly if we were only private Catholics in the, secrets, in the secret of our rooms. We need to pray to our Father in secret, but we need to preach from the housetops the truth of God's mercy and Jesus Christ. So finally, brothers and sisters, as we live this grace of mercy, this grace of the year of mercy, we also look to the Mater Misericordiae, the mother of mercy, for whom we have a hospital named here in Dublin on the north side. She is the mother of mercy because she shows us mercy, but also because she's physically the mother of mercy. Jesus is mercy. She is his mother. If we're close to her, if we follow her way, if we're attentive to her motherly direction, we will change the world. With God, all things are possible. Remember that. And with Mary, that possibility that God makes and that God creates comes to us through and in Jesus, her son. So, brothers and sisters, let's thank God for the gift of the Divine Mercy Conference. We salute all those who've organized it over these 25 years, and we hope that it goes for another 25 years, spreading the grace and peace of Christ. And we pray that we will be courageous missionaries of God's mercy in the Ireland of today.
stand now and we profess our faith in Christ and in his holy church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with hearts filled with gratitude, we offer our prayers of petition and intercession to our Heavenly Father, knowing that he is rich in mercy. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Charles Brown, all cardinals, archbishops, bishops, church leaders, and clergy. We ask that God will bless them and the Holy Spirit will enlighten them in their ministry. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord, all-powerful God, you are the creator of the universe and present in the smallest of creatures. Teach us to contemplate you in the beauty of the universe and recognize our responsibility to care for all life on our planet. We ask you during this Lenten season to transform our lives and strengthen us in our struggle for justice, mercy, love, and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, you are the visible face of the invisible Father of God, who is full of mercy and forgiveness. Grant peace to the troubled areas in the world. We pray for all who cannot, cannot be with us today, the sick, the suffering, the poor, the homeless, and those marginalized in society. May they receive practical support, spiritual comfort, and healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray through the intercession of Mary, Mother of Mercy, and your spirit, that this Jubilee of Mercy, a year of grace from the Lord, you will fill us with renewed enthusiasm to be transmitters of the joy of the gospel each day of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for all the faithful departed, especially promoters of your divine mercy. May they and all our departed loved ones, relatives and friends, be granted eternal rest, happiness and peace in the heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord Lord, 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 hear us. Let's ask Our Lady, Mother of Mercy's intercession for all of these intentions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know our thoughts and our hearts better than we know them ourselves. We present all these petitions to you, filled with humility and confidence, because we ask them in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and who is God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
This is my body, broken for you, bringing you wholeness, making you free. Take it and eat it, and when you do, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults 
and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the, of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us Set us free. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Germit, our Bishop, our Papal Nuncio, Charles Brown, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Faustina Kowalska, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my heart.
as yesterday, if you could stay in your places until the stewards and the priests have got their places, and then it will move much more smoothly. Two celiac stations on my right and on my left. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make our thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Before I give the final blessing, and we also bless religious objects, before that happens, we have a few thanks and announcements that need to be made. So I'd ask you to please be seated. First of all, just to thank His Excellency, our Papal Nuncio, Archbishop Charles Brown, for his inspirational, motivational, and great leadership talk to us as Disciples of Mercy. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank his two concelebrants, Father Michael Ross, our own spiritual director and director of Radio Maria. And, and Father Emmett O'Hara is uh, the director of the Retreat House in the Palatines and Torla. So thank you both very much. I'd like to give a big rule of to the priests who came and heard confessions over the last three days and all these men behind me here. So without them, we wouldn't have a conference. That's great. So uh, next I'd like to move on to our speakers. To Father, on Friday night here we had the most amazing night for, it was for young people, for families and for everybody and it was totally free and that's, uh, I love, that's the way I'd love to have the whole conference if, if we could afford it, but I'd love to have it all free. But Friday night was free. Father John Harris uh, led the ceremonies and we had, we had confessions, we had adoration, we had Holy Mass. And it was fantastic to see such a lineup of young people. We had about 1,800 people here, and to see young faces was absolutely amazing. I'd like to thank Frances Hogan for her, uh, for her talk yesterday morning. 
on forgiveness. And uh, I don't think she's with us, but Francis, wherever you are, thank you. I'm with Father Pat Collins this morning and asking, you know, apologizing and asking for forgiveness and what it is, how humbling it is when we ask somebody for forgiveness, for their forgiveness. So to Father Pat and for his blessing this morning, thank you very much. <laughs> Yesterday, Father Michael Ross led us in the reconciliation service from half two to three o'clock, again on the whole theme round as we forgive those who trespass against us. And thank you very much for that in this jubilee year of mercy. <laughs> of course, um, our own sister Bridge for her talks on <laughs> fantastic, yes. She's always of great memories in 1995 when we were struggling, literally struggling financially to make ends meet, to run the conference. Sister Breach came and we filled the place and it took the pressure off for about 10 years to come. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I, I should have included the, the famous intercession duo, of course, our, our partner in crime, Father Kevin Scallon, for his beautiful holy hour this morning. That are, you know, their household names all over the world, and they talk about going to places like Florida and Hawaii and all these faraway places that we'd only dream about, but it's their everyday life, so I'll carry their bags any day. <laughs> I'd like to say thanks to Sister Concilio that I always love her humility and her beautiful devotion to Our Lady. And congratulations on your 50th year of Coonbera. Fantastic. And 75,000 people treated. That's some achievement. So well done. If you treat work addictions, I'll give you a visit. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'd like to thank, next, I'd like to thank all of the all of the people who, I, oh, sorry, man, I nearly forgotten, I shouldn't forget, Philip Ryan for the great man on. As I said yesterday, when he, forgot, he said to me, I forgot my notes, I said, thanks be to God. I said, you speak better when it's from the heart. So he's a great, great guy and gives great testimony to our lady. So Philip, well done. <clears throat> I'd like to thank to all the people who have, uh, yourselves, who've traveled from all sorts of places to be with us here at expense and accommodation, especially when we're competing with a European poker classic. Um, they certainly put up the prices around Dublin on the accommodation side to match the poker stakes. But, uh, but thanks to you all for making the huge effort. And especially too, to, we had so many people from England this year a huge number coming all the way from England, and we are joined by Father Andras from the Marians and Father and John Carroll, who's the European Divine Mercy delegate, English delegate, and David Walford, and all the people who came from England, Scotland, and Wales. Thanks very much. I'd like to thank our liturgy team. Father Emmett O'Hara was leading this year with Eamon O'Keefe and his team and our Sarkrisons, Gemma and Trina. They did a fantastic job in, in gelling together and knitting together. <clears throat> of course, our conference would never be the same without Robbie and his musical minstrels. He's been with us 25 years. And as he mentioned earlier on, our, our good colleague, Eamon Duke, who's also been with us from the start of the 25 years, he's, he's only the small age of 96, so we have to forgive him for not being here, but he's with us in spirit and watching us on the internet. Yeah. And thank to Roland and Belinda and their team from Medjugorje, very, very beautiful music, especially on the Friday night. on our stewards, on Ashling and her team, and all the people that, uh, that contributed on the stewarding, on the doors, on the tickets, on the cloakrooms, 
on the catered and on all the bits and pieces and all the collectors and the whole lot. Thank you to each and every one of you for all your work. I'd like to say to our sound, of course, our sound people for Tony, Sean and Jerry on the sound, for Shane and Craig on the AVC, thank you for making all of this possible with the great, the fantastic service you give us and they've been with us from the start as well, so thanks very much. Um, I'd like to thank um, Philip and Paul from the RDS for all the work that they do for us and for Mary who looks after our adoration room, for Una Williams on photography, for, and a big special thank you now for Marie McCaffrey. Marie uh, looks after, looked after all the tickets, the phones, the stalls. The lady was run off her feet and only she was ably assisted by Teresa Farrell and her own Eileen and Margaret Sands from Northern Ireland also on the database. So thank you so much for all your work. Fantastic. So I'd like to thank as well, I'd like to thank the people on the, the tape stands on our own CDs and DVDs that they've been working nonstop down there too. Um, to all the girls, to again, there's Marie and Anne, Bridget, uh, Maureen. Um, oh, there's another name down there now, and I can't think of it. But thanks very much, girls, for all your work over the weekend, you know. I hope I haven't left anybody out, you know. But Oh my no, gosh, now at the committee, I'd like to thank Father Michael Ross, our spiritual director, that he, he came to me at a time in my hour of need about three years ago when I was really up against the wall. So he's, uh, he's got Radio Maria off the ground. He's been run off his feet this year. And we have a Divine Mercy Hour on Radio Maria every Tuesday night from 7 to 8. And that's thanks to Father Michael Ross. Thank you so much. So I'd like to thank uh, for our committee then, and they asked this year that I not uh, mention functions with them, that I just thank them as a group. Um, but for all the work that went into getting the RDS ready here, um, Martin Connolly led the way on that, assisted by Don Fagg and Mary Anderson. Eileen was assisting on the tickets and the DVDs and the whole lot, so uh, they really put in a lot of long hours, a lot of... We all have day jobs. People ring up to us at times looking for the accounts department. <laughs> and you have to change your accent. And <laughs> I'm only joking. But they do ring up looking for the accounts. We don't have any, all volunteers. Um, and I'd like to thank Eileen in particular, my own uh, wife that from the 25 years, and for all the children while they're growing up now. But, uh, you know, they've been with us as well over the 25 years. And it just, Robbie will tell you from his experience, it just goes so fast, but thanks to Eileen and my own family as well for all the support and using our house, our kitchen table as our registered office. <laughs> Since it is our 25th that, um, I, as I mentioned yesterday, I'd like to say a thank you to, at the start 25 years ago, when there was, uh, there was bordering on hostility to the Divine Mercy devotion, but it's a grassroots devotion that has come up from the people upwards. And there was hostility 25 years ago, and it took a lot of courage and guts uh, to be involved in it at the time. But I thank Father Cottle Price for his leadership and courage then. And you know, some of the people that were on the committee uh, 25 years ago are still while they're not on the committee now, but they're still helping in the background and they're still a great prayer support. Loretta O'Connor, Monica Geraghty, um, Paul Wickham and Jerry Duff are still there assisting from behind. So thank you very much for all your work. I hope I haven't left anybody out. If I have, somebody give me a hint. <laughs> Jesus and Mary, and thanks be to God, yes, to Jesus, the Divine Mercy, and His Blessed Mother Mary, for, of course, we wouldn't have this without them. Yes, indeed. So now we move on to the 
a very important part of the, of the evening is where we have the raffle for the ticket in Medjugorje. And again, I'm available to, to carry anybody's cases that wants me along. <laughs> so I think we'll, we'll ask the, our papal nuncio, I think, to pull the ticket because you trust him. <laughs> We'll start with the county. Wexford. Town, Gory. Name, Ann Redmond. Ann, where are you? Is David there with the camera? Is David Walford there with the camera? David? <laughs> uh. So is David Walford there with the camera? Oh, here he is now. Come on. <laughs> if you can get David a picture of Anne Redmond with the papal nuncio. Actually, we're... I'll let them do this for us, Martin. Does he want to, does he have to take it now? That's oh, another one. Oh, yeah. Actually, while you're down there, I'll bring the box down to you. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> we have another one. Okay, it's another lady. The county is Meath. Whoa. The town is Kells. Mary Whelan. Over there. Fantastic, I think. Okay. Mary Whelan. What's the lady's name? Mar Ma Mary Whelan. Mary Whelan. 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 From Kells County Meath. Mary Whelan from Kells County Meath. I think she, she's over there, I think, coming up. Come on down. down. <laughs> uh, there's a black handbag there.
All right, this, this one's a little bit harder to read. And it's either... Martin. You sure? Martin. Not Martin? Martin. It looks like it's Martin Higgins. His email address is strikerhiggins at msn.com. Martin Higgins? Martin, are you here? Is he here? Martin! This is for the youth yeah. night. It says on the bottom, please print name clearly. This is another ticket to Mejigoria. Are you Martin? So I meant to say to, to, uh, the first ticket was donated by Marian Pilgrimage as our good friend Tom Fields and the second two were do donated by uh, Joe Walsh for, they came at me out of the blue last minute so there we had three tickets to Medjugorje so thanks be to God. So, and thanks to the Archbishop. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for doing that. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to finish up with first a blessing on religious objects. And then a blessing on all of you. So if you can get out your religious objects, you want to be blessed. The blessing will go through the bag, so just it's okay. Yeah. Okay. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon all these religious objects and remain with them forever. Amen. Finally, our Mass finishes with the blessing over the people. Bless your faithful people, O Lord, we pray, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord, amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And uh, nobody thanked Don Devaney. 25 years of service. God bless you, Don. God bless you, buddy. to Damien and Pauline and Martin Connolly for organising Friday night for the young people as well. I forgot, I left them out in that. So thanks very much. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a Dangerous.